how long is the biggest aircraft carrier? Okay, aircraft carrier, aircraft, oh, US Nimitz class, 341 meters. Yeah, aircraft carrier, 341 meters. How long is the biggest dry bulk carrier? Or oh, carrying sand or cement and stuff. Uh, dry bulk carrier, longer, 362 meters. R E S for um, the rest of the world. America spell it's E R S for meters. The biggest ship in the world is a container ship, which carries 12 meter steel cuboids. They can fit on lorries and trucks. Yeah. Uh, how many passenger journeys did Britain, Britain's rail network carry in 1900? 1900. Uh, there. Britain's rail. Um, how many passengers? 1900. Passengers is the light blue, not well, the blue rather than the red. <clears throat> 1.3. 1 1.3? 1 oh, 1.3 billion. Using the above question, work out how long the average journey was in kilometres. Oh, hold on, put that in the wrong place. 1.3 billion. How many million kilometres were there? How many passenger kilometers were there in 1900 right okay passenger so like 20 passenger kilometers 20 billion okay using above questions work out how long the average journey was well 20 divided by 1.3 20 over 1.3 equals 200 over 13 okay 13 into 200 Goes one, seven over seventy. Thirteen times five is fifty, sixty-five. Yeah, about fifteen. Well, okay, only fifteen kilometers. I suppose people were going to work. Cars, trams, and buses became mass forms of transport in the nineteen twenties. What effect did this have on passenger kilometers? Nineteen ten, nineteen twenty. Passenger kilometers drop. Yeah, because rather than using the train for small journeys, they were using the um, cars and buses. What happened to passenger kilometres during the Second World War, 1939 to 45? Okay, so that's 40, that's 30, so in this area. Oh, increase. Oh, yeah, because uh, all of the gas, all of the gas in America, petrol in England, all of the petrol was being used for their um, tanks and for uh, trucks and stuff for the, for the war. So everyone went back to trains because trains use coal. And we had loads of coal in England, but all of the petrol that we used had to come from the US. Or a little bit from the um, Middle East, but mostly from the US. When the Britons, when the Britons rail network, when Britain's rail network was controlled by change that when Britain's net rail network was controlled by the government between 1945 and 19 okay there 45 until okay that's 50 60 70 80 90 2000 95 oh 1990 did the number of passengers trend up or down number of passengers while it was in private hands, uh, down, down a little bit. Oh no, that's that's the passenger kilometers. Number of passengers definitely down. When British Rail was sold to private for profit companies, I think comma there, comma there. Did the passenger kilometers and passenger journeys trend up or down? Oh yeah, up, up, very much up. Everyone complains about. The railways now they're privatized but actually they're moving a lot more people how many traffic deaths per hundred thousand people were there in 2013 in montana montana 
uh, traffic deaths, US states, Montana. How many deaths? Oh wow, Montana, like, came bit top in the world for deaths. 23 deaths per 100,000 people. Yeah, don't go driving in Montana. <laughs> How many traffic deaths per 100,000 people were there in 2013 in New Jersey? Jersey. In New Jersey. Uh, six. Yeah, uh, go driving in New Jersey, not in Montana. Montana is four times more dangerous. How many traffic deaths per 100,000 were there in 2013 in Japan? Oh, five. Slightly safer than New Jersey. What is the population per square kilometre of New Jersey? Population 400. Oh, lots of people. What is the population per kilometre of Japan? 350. People per square kilometre. Oh, when there's lots of people per square kilometre, uh, there's less deaths. Uh, the line of best fit shows that places where... Um, there's not many people living, then you get many more deaths per 100,000 people. I suppose people are just in their cars more, going longer distances to see their relatives, maybe, or shops. The line of best fit, best, the line of best fit shows that there are less traffic deaths in places with, uh, high population densities how many traffic deaths per 100,000 people in the US were there in 1966 1966 traffic deaths about there uh, 28 per 100,000 how many traffic deaths per 100,000 people in the US were there in 2005 15 mm, oh about half oh okay Cars are becoming much, much safer. Probably because of all the seatbelts and stuff. Yeah, wear seatbelts. Good idea. My name's Good Luck Gary. Press like, press subscribe. If your mum wants me to help you with your science and maths, then, or your dad, then your GCSE, IBs, HSCs, A levels, SATs, then they can contact me via goodluckgaryhk at gmail.com. Bye!